um, one thing that cheered me over the weekend is our girls who are doing us proud, who did us proud. They took the cup, they become a basketball champion in Africa. And our ladies also, in the Australia, in the World Cup, in the Women's World Cup, they're also into the quarterfinals of the Women's World Cup. World Cup. We're cheering you on, and we are hoping that this other side that gives us joy will be able to rub off on the other side that doesn't give us as much joy. So let's focus on some other things. Congratulations to all of them, and uh, congratulations to Nigeria. So um, let, let's get into... Uh, one matter that is of importance, uh, two of them actually, are the ministerial nominees and their screening. Are you satisfied as a Nigerian watching them and how the Senate did carry on with the activities? Are they scrutinizing them? These are the people that are supposed to take charge of every sector of our lives. Are they really grilling them and getting the right information and getting them prepped up for the task ahead? And also, the, 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 the cool situation in Niger Republic, Niger is our neighbor, next door neighbor, whatever affects them. In fact, the lang language like Kanuri, Fufude, Hausa languages have been spoken. Some Nigerians are even married to Nigerians. They are seen as our brothers and sisters. And so it bothers a lot of Nigerians what happened to them. Let's get talking about this. I'm being joined tonight by Senator Oyekachi. Yeah, boy. Uh, who is a senator from a boy state. Thank you so much, Senator, for joining us tonight. Thank you, Shu. Yeah. And I have an academic, a scholar of international relations, uh, the, um, the Ding Obronu Elders from Professor Khalifa Dikwa. He joins us live from Obronu's uh, uh, Meduguri studio. Thank you so much, Prof, and it's good to see you tonight. Thank you very much, Shu. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good, good evening, um, Nigerians. Yeah. All of us. Great, 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 great. Prof, uh, let me begin with you, Prof, tonight. Um, what is happening in the National Assembly? I'll, I'll begin with the issue of the screening. Uh, what's your view on the, the screening process? Are you, are you satisfied with the crop of people, the personalities, the choices frankly, that the um, President Tunubu has it made? Is, it is a bit funny. It is a bit funny because... Actually, it didn't start from the National Assembly. Uh, some of them with hard baggage from uh, erratic uh, certificates to what they did in the past, either uh, not having attended NYC or inconsistency in their ages and so on. That, that aspect ought to have been discovered from the, from the Secret Service. I'm um, amazed that... Uh, the Secret Service that we knew very well, meticulous in its work, it, it is uh, allowing a few of them to drag its image uh, into the mud because uh, some, even some questions at the, at the Senate ought to have been beyond, beyond even the certificate, be it a uh, school living certificate, which is the minimum, or you have up to masters or PhDs and so on, because you ought to know some aspects of what you are likely to work as a minister. When you are a minister, you are literally representing Mr. President, and you, you should feel <coughs> challenged like Mr. President in your areas. Again, the Nigeria is a big country desires to have uh, ministers who know something outside their own area of um, specialization or ministry. Uh, people who are intellectually sound, at least in terms of international relations, how international politics is played, how in certain quarters of the world uh, blatant lies are made to look uh, finer and more beautiful than the basic truth and they sometimes call it uh, diplomacy. And therefore, I, I, I was a bit amazed because even if you are a senator, for instance, having been a part of the National Assembly, uh, solidarity or esprit de corps that we call in French, at least there are questions that you ought to answer. Uh, why? Uh, perhaps at least you will say it depends on the portfolio I'm going to be given. Why is it that Mr. President did not give them the portfolio to give them the, the entire 
people of Nigeria the impression against uh, who the search minister is going to do in case he was in the wrong place, suggestions may come. But unfortunately, we still do not have ministers. And again, with the certain things that I say with the, with the uh, military coup in Niger, uh, Mr. President had advisors, advisors who knew had some history and who knew some how international politics is, uh, is played, the situation would, would have been different because uh, whether uh, you, you go to school to read history, the so basic thing is that you should know more than your own state. And uh, I dare say that um, sometimes I, I used to mock my, my friends from Lagos. I always tell them that you, you become, you don't know anything outside Lagos, Lagos state, and that you always you only face the, the sea, and that you, your brain is not properly utilized to memorize so many things, you, and you are, you are likely to be comfortable with the uh, fish brain. I, I always <laughs> disturb them that way. I said, you don't even know where uh, Sokoto is, Borno is, Yola, you know, not the borders like Ilela. You don't have the borders of Berniwa in Jigawa. Ilela in Sokoto, uh, about seven states, and you have Yobe, you know them part of Yobe, you have Gaidam Unisari, the same thing with northern, northern Borno, where the same people uh, were split into two uh, in 1887 at the Berlin Conference, where uh, colonial uh, administration sat down to, to split brothers, blood brothers, uh, just uh, they sat down to divide the, uh, the continent like a cake. Yeah, so, so Prof, if, if you they, look at it uh, carefully, yeah, are dead. Yeah. so the yes. choices of president, oh, I mean, you've, you've touched on uh, how you think that the senators should have gone about uh, what uh, uh, grilling, I mean, uh, I, I think maybe, I'm not sure, we can use the word grilling do, if they that. To do they the that. basic things. Yes, yeah. particularly on foreign affairs. If you were Minister of Foreign Affairs, we internal affairs, if you were the Minister of Defense, at this crucial time, how to approach a crisis, how, how, to do, how not to do in terms of the language that will annoy the neighboring countries with whom we've been fighting insurgency for 14 years. And this is the kind of thing, and again, uh, advisors, if there were advisors or ministers, relevant ministers at that time, who will have told our president uh, that uh, having been appointed the chairman of ECOWAS, ECOWAS is basically for economic, not politics, even though in economics too, poly there are uh, uh, games of politics, and that uh, uh, you could have allowed another member of the, the deputy from the, from the ECOWAS to say it because the interpretation now being given is that uh, it is uh, President Tunubu who declared this thing as, as if he, he put military intervention as first. It was actually, it was the last and on behalf of the, uh, uh, on behalf of uh, the ECOWAS itself, on behalf of it, not because on, if I, Nigeria. If it were on behalf of Nigeria, that Mr. President wouldn't have that, done that uh, uh, mistake of uh, committing an impeachable uh, offense because the National Assembly ought to have had the consent. And the story would have been different with somebody who believed in staying there longer than necessary. For instance, during the the reign, the, the uh, uh, leadership or tenure of uh, President Obasanjo Njo as a, as a civilian uh, uh, president for eight years. You, you remember the document they signed um, in Paris over whatever that could come out of the ICJ verdict about Bakasi or any other neighborhoods, including the Lake Chat region which was uh, uh, later discovered by the colonial powers to have uh, been too rich to be left in the hands of uh, anybody. And, and sadly, Nigeria is the only, only country in the region, in, in fact, in the sub-region, whatever it is, that has no uh, military from outside, from outside the continent. 
So that is also disturbing them because uh, we have shown our ability to, to stand for all these things despite the overwhelming situation that uh, we are going through in terms of insurgency, banditry, and so on, Sheung. Yes. All right, Prof, let me come uh, to the studio here with uh, Senator Wabon. Um, uh, do you have a feeling that m m maybe some Nigerians are not quite satisfied with the manner in which you and your colleagues had gone about the process of screening these ministerial nominees? Well, thank you, Shiro. First and foremost, I want to congratulate those that made the list um, out of... Uh, over 200 million of uh, Nigerians, 48 were nominated to serve in the Federal Executive Council. And um, on the other hand, I want to appreciate Mr. President for painstakingly, you know, making this nomination. I believe that uh, he actually looked down well, and that is why he was able to see the news, because it is the eye that looked down well that can see the news. Uh, when you look at the, at the pedigree of the People nominated go through their CV. Uh, these are people that have actually distinguished themselves uh, in the previous position they have held, either at the federal level, uh, state level, and uh, what have you. And um, of course, it is our duty, you know, as a parliament, or precisely the Senate, you know, uh, to look at them and uh, for possible confirmation in line with the provisions of the relevant sections of the Constitution of Nigeria. Mm. And um, I must tell you, uh, if you really observe the process, uh, you can see that uh, we are not joking about it. You, you, uh, are you? Yes. Uh, the, the, because there are, there are those who believe that the, the bow and go syndrome just took over. No. And that you, you just did not do what was right by Nigerians, hoping that you were going to take some of these people to task. Nigerians are facing a lot of problems, and if these guys are supposed, if these nominees are supposed to be the ones to handle and bring solutions, have you been able to extract capacity, extract knowledge, extract intellect, extract wisdom that they could use in tackling this problem from them? Have you done a satisfactory job, Senator? I must tell you, I've done so well in that regard. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, if you observe the proceedings from the beginning, you actually know that uh, 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 we didn't ask any to bow and go. You we did, actually. actually. Uh, well, I don't, I don't know. You did a lot, a lot, a lot of your well, colleagues well, there. Well, there are, there are some colleagues. Uh, After they, they explained their profiles, by virtue, it was just a matter of yes, bow and go. By virtue of the rules you know, of the Senate, there are some privileges that lawmakers enjoy. In the face yes. of, of this kind of situation, yeah, because a lot this, of people believe that Nigeria is going through a lot. And uh, you cannot say bow and go when people need to answer questions that need to test their capacity of how they can handle office. Well, thank you so much. Uh, in as much as uh, I don't admit that uh, we actually ask some to bow and go, uh, it, it takes us to what is the essence you know, of the screening. The essence of the screening is to understand the capacity of a nominee towards a particular office. Mm -hmm. In this case, to be appointed as a minister. To test? Yes. And well, if the person faced the test, yes. you screen the person yes. out? Yes. But if the person before now has shown capacity, somebody has been a senator, somebody has been a member of the House of Representatives, and what did the Constitution say? For you to be qualified to be a minister in the Free Executive Council, you must be qualified to be a member of at least House of Reps. Of, as of reps yes. So why That's you a look, minimum standard. Yes, a minimum standard. So when you see that this person, and of course the CVs were submitted, so, 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 uh, and who peruse through their Senator, CVs. Senator, the yes. question is that what is the standard of being a member of the House of Reps? You have a basic school certificate. Yes. And you are 30 years of age. Of course. That is the minimum standard. Of course. Do you think that the Nigeria of today deserves someone who is just 30 years and has a school cert, and that is all it is for you, then you come and bow and go? Well, are you saying that everyone that has been to the National Assembly is fit to become a minister of the Federal Republic based on the Nigeria of today? That is a fundamental question. Well, uh, it doesn't suffice, you know, for you to just qualify to be a member of the House of Ref. For us, for, for us to ask you to bow and go. We we'll look at your CVs. Remember, they submitted their curriculum vitae a day ahead, and have gone through it, gone through the achievements in the private sector, the achievements in the public sector. So in such case, when you see that somebody has the capacity 
For example, if you allow me, I, I can pick some of the individuals. For example, we look at somebody like uh, 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 Dr. Lausa from Lagos. This is somebody that I've actually, though not a member of the, the parliament before, but in the field of medicine, he has distinguished himself, not just in Nigeria, for the inter uh, international community. So it, when you see such a personality, even though we subjected him to further scrutiny, you don't need further, you don't need a suicide to tell you that if you give this man Minister of Health, he's going to do wonders. And that takes us to a person like uh, Senator David Uwezo Omahe. He's a member of the Senate. Your man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course, my former governor. Yeah. He's, not my, he's my former governor. Yeah, but he's from your state. Yeah, he's That's from my state. Yeah, yeah. When you look at that man, that man is a guru in the area of infrastructure development. You can see what he did in Ebony State within the past eight years. Ebony State is one of the states that received the least allocation. But look at what the young man did. He first of all, you know, started with the uh, uh, road infrastructure. Before now in Ebony State, when you construct road with asphalt, in two to three years, the road will fail completely. This man brought another innovation of doing road with concrete pavement. How many Nigerians know that uh, Dave Omai is an engineer? How many Nigerians know his capacity? He just governed only one state. Thank you. Just probably one of the, one of the smallest states in Nigeria. Thank you. Now, you are coming to become a minister of the Federal Republic. That, the, that requires another level of knowledge and capacity and expertise. Don't you think that you need to bring that person in under a, 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 a scrutiny that will show whether he has capacity? Let me tell you something. You, you, you can always assess somebody based on his precedence. Presidents, guys, in this case, if somebody have done well as a governor, remember, Ebony, I take exception to the fact that Ebony is one of the smallest states. It's not true. In, in land, terms of landmass, land mass, it's one not, of the smallest states in Nigeria. Well, it may be, but not the smallest. You, in fact, you get one of the smallest uh, the only, agree allocation, you, federal allocation. We'll get the smallest I can analyze in. how, why you fall within the five smallest states in Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, now, like I said earlier, you go by precedents. For example, now you're going for an interview in another uh, media house. People will look at this Shenwu, ah, the Shenwu of Channel Television, oh, the guy is eloquent, oh, the guy can do well. The, the, the assessment starts from there. And somebody who have done marvelously well as a governor of a state and came up with an innovation that no other governor in the history of Nigeria, even the entire West Africa, have come up with. Concrete road pavement. Go to Ebony State today and see what he did. Within eight years, all the roads he did are still standing. And we'll stand for the next 50 years. Senator. These are the type of leaders we want. Have you, have you ever watched how the American Congress scrutinize those who are going to be in the, in the, pre, uh, in the cabinets of the American president? Yes, I've, I've, of course, I've seen so many. And um, that is what we are doing. Compared to this, do you think that uh, you have done a good job, you and your colleagues? Of a truth, we have done a good job. We have done a good By job. your own assessment. You can tune in tomorrow. We still have two ministers to screen. We cover this live every day. Let me tell I you. I monitor this. this Let is, me tell you. This is my us, food. This is my drink. I watch it, it takes every us day, up to one every hour. bit of it. It takes us up to one hour to finish with one ministerial nominee. So we're not talking about it. Go through it. Go, go, through, the, go, go, go through the process. You will see it. So, in fact, you can see one young man that uh, came yesterday that we had to call his attention to what he tweeted against Nigeria. In fact, it took him over an hour. Senator, I mean, to that, satisfy Nigeria so that the question well is that government. you took attention in the, fo the first, uh, the, those who described the early screening as a sham, as something that is less than a standard that is supposed to be for the Nigerian Senate and for the caliber of the people that we know are in the, in the red chambers. Uh, there are a lot of Nigerians who are this, unhappy with the manner in which you have gone about it. But in the last few days, it, it showed that maybe you are listening, uh, your chamber is listening to Nigeria. Of course, we are listening to it. But the question is that you are cherry picking. Mm. You pick the persons that you want to scrutinize. You pick the ones that you want to cover up, your members of your party. No, we, and we, you just we allow don't them do that. To I take a to that. It, send it, send it, but that's what is obvious. No, that's we what don't is going do that. on. We subjected all of them to equal treatment. I'll be asking you when we come back from the break, and Thank Professor Dikwa is, uh, is also here. Your region has only five nominees compared to Southwest, Northwest, yeah. and I'd like to get your view as a member of cabinet, I mean, a member of the Senate on this matter. What the president has done to the Southeast, which I'm also hearing, that APC members in the Southeast are already talking. Northwest, Northeast, they have about nine, 10 
uh, 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 ministerial nominees. What has happened to their region? We'll be discussing that. And also the coup in Niger and the intervention of President Tunubu and ECOWAS. We'll be right back, everyone. Turn us into. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Professor Khalifa Dukwa is the Dean of Bronu Elders Forum. He's been speaking with us from our Meduguri studio. And here with me in our Abuja studio is Senator Onye Kachi Onweboi, who is a member of the National Assembly in the Senate and uh, from AP, APC and uh, in, uh, from uh, uh, Ebonyi State. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Before I go to Prof, uh, just quick questions uh, that I need to ask you. So you have two more to go in the ministerial um, uh, screening no that you have. Um, so you have uh, Dr. Mahmoud and you have uh, Professor Kiyamo. Kiyamo. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> and then, of course, you now ratify and uh, confirm if, yes. uh, if, if possible. Those that pass the test. Or not? Yes. OK. Um, but you know, just to let you know that Nigerians are really hoping and uh, expecting that you and your colleagues will live up to the expectation and to the bidding. And also, we act in the interest of the Nigerian people in whatever you are doing, yes. including the monies that you appropriate for yourselves in the National Assembly. You also need to consider that things are not going very well for Nigerians. And uh, the 70 billion and any other money that you are appropriating, the car loans, maybe you can defy it uh, for the good of Nigerians. But that's just an aside. But let me ask you. They, they, you went into an executive session over the, the, the coup matter uh, in Niger. Um, what was that heated conversation that some of us were is dropping on uh, behind uh, the doors? Well, um, the Niger incident, of course, is a very worrisome one. Uh, as an African, uh, you remember that um, uh, about three or four countries in West Africa yeah, if it's under the leadership of the military junta's, and that is not very good, uh, you know, as a continent. And uh, President Bola uh, Chinubu, uh, being the you know the chairman of ECOWAS, of course, uh, is upon him to make sure that the right thing is done. And uh, what is the right thing in this contest? Of course, to do all that is within his powers, you know, as the chairman of ECOWAS, you know, to restore uh, democratic rules in Niger. And uh, in line with the constitutional provision, uh, he wrote to the Senate, you know, seeking our nod uh, to some of the diplomatic measures, you know, all geared towards restoring normalcy and democracy in Niger. Uh, it was well canvassed, and uh, of course, I must tell you, uh, all the measures being proposed by Mr. President are in line with the constitutional provision, uh, you know, uh, it has not erred in any form, and uh, there was no controversy. A per se. Did he uh, ask for military uh, uh, boots on the ground in Niger? Uh, uh, of course. Uh, military intervention, of course, would be the last resort. Did he, it was, was it part of his request? It was not part of the request. Uh, remember, before we can do that, uh, the constitution mandates the boat house, you know, to sit, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, jointly and give such approval. So that tells you that they cannot ask Senate uh, for, for, for approval for military intervention in the first place. Uh, so all he asks is for, you know, other diplomatic measures, you know, like economic sanctions, you know. Uh, as can be seen, the letter is a public document. You can see there. So uh, when it becomes necessary, you know, for military intervention, which I know is the final, the last resort, of course, definitely we'll consider it and, of course, advise appropriately. Uh, remember, um, this is a very sensitive matter uh, that we should not uh, play politics with because uh, uh, today is Niger. Who knows what happens tomorrow? And uh, if one country out of uh, you know the, 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 the country that make up the West Africa uh, is not happy, of course it affects us as a Nigeria, as a country. So it's something that we we'll have to keep politics aside and do the need for. Mm. So if if military operation becomes necessary, definitely the Senate will look at it and will advise appropriately. Uh, let me go to uh, Professor Dukwa in uh, Meduguri studio, uh, Prof. Uh, you have a lot of understanding yeah. about uh, international relations of this magnitude. And uh, uh, if, if you can just let our, our viewers know, Niger, for those who do not even have an idea of what this country is all about, is one of the largest in, in terms of landmass, <coughs> but it's less than the population of Lagos and Oyo State put together. It's about uh, 25 million or so. It's landlocked. 
is bordered by Libya, bordered by the Republic, bordered by um, uh, um, Algeria, Man. Nigeria, Chad, and um, uh, it has a, a huge land mass, of Man. course. And language is similar to Nigeria, uh, such as Kanuri, Fufude, Hausa languages are being spoken in that country. And also, uh, to, to also be mentioned here, that that country is one of the poorest countries in the world. Now, looking at what happened in Libya, give us an understanding. Okay, you can see the military size of the country uh, is GDP. Uh, it's, it's relatively, in terms of population, small. Economy-wise, they, 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 they have a, a very um, a poor economy set. But, Prof, give us an understanding. Uh, yes. of what you make yes. of President Tunubu's stance, the federal government's stance and position uh, in what is happening in Niger Republic? Great question, Sean. Look, before even the coming of the white man, the colonialist, Niger was just like an extension of northern Nigeria. And we had the, the oldest uh, empire in the entire uh, sub-region, which was Kanem Borno, which ruled for over 1,200 years before the emergence of other, uh, other uh, kingdoms and so on, and uh, shares borders with, with Nigeria for over 1,100 uh, kilometers with many roads leading to the intermarriages. In fact, the, uh, Niger uh, is, uh, and uh, those from northern Nigeria are blood brothers, speaking the same language, they have the same culture. Until 1884 at the Berlin Conference, when the, the white men decided to sit down, I, I earlier referred to, shared uh, like a cake without the consent or presence of any uh, African delegation. And you, you know why is it poor? that uh, uh, why is it that uh, people were quick to, to go behind to, to, to accept the, the junta uh, military, though the, it is not uh, a fashion for us to have military regime. But in the case of Niger, um, indeed, all the ex-French colonies have never attained independence, economically speaking. When your independence is not economically viable, it means the political one is not, virtually nothing. Uh, Niger is number, number six in, uh, in the world in terms of uranium. Uh, it also has gas, and that in every three bulbs lit in, in France, one is from Niger, uh, Niger uh, uranium, and therefore, they had to agree, sign a document prior to the independence of Niger on the 3rd of August, which was yesterday, 63rd of them, to sign that no any country is qualified to even train any, uh, any personnel, military or police personnel from Niger, except France. And uh, France was also given the green light to intervene militarily at any time, and those resources are controlled by France. France keeps 85% of the resources, all of them, 85% and kept them in French treasury. They are being ruled under the Minister of Finance. The way I'm speaking English now, I can also speak French. I, I was a student there, and I was also a visiting professor. I was teaching the, the policies of colonial countries like France, Britain, America, and so on, uh, outside France. The typical of like American students or British and so on, they don't know geography, they don't know their history. They don't know. They don't know where Nigeria is, where Africa is. And that uh, those uh, who were a bit surprised by the decision of Mr. President not to have allowed uh, the, uh, any the secretariat to have done it in the, uh, on behalf of the, the colonial, uh, on behalf of the um, members of ECOWAS themselves, numbering 14, uh, the coup is a military coup. Fine. What about the constitutional coup? that happened, they looked the other way simply because 
those who broke the laws in order to remain in power in Guinea, yes, in Guinea in the past it happened, they didn't say anything. In Cote d'Ivoire, so, so when prof, Bagbo, Laurent yeah, Bagbo yeah. wanted a recount of the votes, it was French troops, let me land, it okay. was French troops that intervened and dislodged Laurent Bagbo. And again, the same place, and uh, so many, so many things. Constitutionally, they, they did it. In Nigeria, we were lucky, we were able to defeat it. And therefore, what was it that uh, those who changed the laws to remain in power were not punished? Simply because, like I said, France has never let their own uh, the ex-colonies go because those people who are uh, colonized by France are still paying for the few infrastructures put in place by France, unfortunately. So, Prof, my question will be, the manner of uh, the approach of President Tinubu and ECOWAS, uh, it doesn't look like that, that it's gone down well with some uh, northern interests. Is that right? In Nigeria. Uh, yeah, it's something like that, because I earlier referred to advisors, because if you were to take advisors or ministers, please, uh, uh, President Dunubu will go for, uh, should go for advisors who know history of Nigeria, who know some international relations, who will advise appropriately. Uh, the concept of putting a team, the Lagos team in the past, is no longer possible at the national level. And therefore, let it, let it be people who know history, and that uh, France, as a country, has never supported Nigeria. Let us put it straight. Uh, during the Biafra War, uh, supported uh, Biafra to pull down Nigeria. And uh, the, uh, France so much believes that a peaceful Nigeria will give it its uh, uh, green light to lead other African countries into economic prosperity, into having fewer or a single currency into having trade within the continent. And those leadership roles, the, the, uh, Nigeria has them in terms of uh, resources, both human and materials. And therefore, mm -hmm. uh, it has always yeah. been, we had instances of seeing foreign, foreign um, uh, plane dropping certain things. And each time you go around, if there is a conflict, and so on, check there are resources in there. People, oh. Uh, I like to have seen a plane in, in Zampara, in the gold uh, mine area, and that independence, since the independence of DR Congo, the fight has been going on, it has never ended. Yeah. And why the Nigeria is the only country that has not invited a UN or European allies? They think what President Tinubu did is, is good, is good for those who, uh, who wanted to, uh, to control the lecture, and to them, uh, the, the conspiracy was that, as I read, as far back as 1984, having an opportunity is not only the lecture region that was taken, uh, to, uh, Lagos was also part of the, the plan, part of the plan because to cripple the economy, and Lagos, it is our New York. Mm. And so, therefore, yeah. uh, look at the border throughout over 1,100 uh, uh, kilometers of people, the same people uh, speaking officially French uh, from the other side, and Nigeria is the only uh, country with English linguistically separating uh, brothers and sisters. So, so prof, and therefore, yeah. uh, Elias said prior to 1884, mm -hmm. there was history, and that history of Khan and Bordeaux was there, no other empire existed. Uh, those uh, Zazza, Kano, Sokoto came over 1,200 years after, after Borno, and so, that, uh, the same culture and so on. Because let the uh, president has done this thing without the consent of the National Assembly. And the National Assembly now belatedly asked, they said no, no to it, because taking uh, a country into, into war front is not a job of one person in this entire thing. The same thing uh, I earlier said about uh, President Obasanjo that Bekasi signed a document on behalf of Nigeria without first of all consulting the National Assembly back in, in Paris. That was any, uh, any uh, verdict uh, mm. passed by the International Court of Justice which are from time to time more of polit uh, political, right. political, why? Because the Western world uh, uh, picks the bill 
and that the Western world do no wrong. Only developing countries the, from Africa, from the Prof, Middle yeah. East, from former Yugoslavia, and so on. Mm. Again, uh, going to war means France is the member of NATO. By law, Article 5, attack on one, one member of NATO is an attack on all of them. Those laws were signed uh, uh, prior to the collapse of the Soviet Union and that no country from former Soviet Union should join NATO. All right. From, oh, from yeah. 12, today there are over, uh, over 30 moving towards the border. That is a subject for another day. That, that, we should, that's we should a very, even discuss it. Yeah. What happened to Libya after the destruction of Libya? Libya did not attack any NATO country uh, before the invasion of Libya. The same thing for yeah. Iraq. Prof, for, yeah. for Bosnia, the same thing applies in Af Afghanistan, yeah. where the law, certain countries are, are above the law, but look at uh, the scenario, the destruction of labor affected all of us in Mali. And once you are a president of Nigeria, mind you just no note it, never think like somebody who has never known other parts of the, uh, the continent. Because all right. Even the people of Mali, far away Mali and Sudan, are uh, uh, loyal to the leadership of, of Nigeria as a big brother. Right. No, uh, just not Prof, about yeah. just what, 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 Chad what, I mean, you, you, you or, played or a Northern very... Cameroon. And therefore, yeah. uh, whatever happened during the uh, subsidy, withdrawal of subsidy, affected all these countries. And I earlier said, I said, subsidy has always been there for energy over 80% yeah. of of those things were subsidized Prof, in European We, we really need to go, but I, I really must thank you for those interventions uh, and the rich understanding and perspectives that you have uh, given us tonight on the situation in Nigeria. Prof. But we really need to go now. Uh, Senator, I just have 20 seconds to go. Five um, ministerial nominees from your state, I mean, from your region. How are your people reacting to this? Well, um, uh, it's a very unfortunate development mm. because uh, outside the statutory one per state, of course, as a Southeast, we deserve uh, one additional ministerial nominee. And, uh, of course, people are talking in the social media. Uh, the agitation is uh, uh, not out of it. Uh, it's quite in place. And um, yeah. uh, it goes without saying that I believe that the president uh, will look at that. But, however, let me use this um, real opportunity to advise uh, my people, the people of Southeast. Uh, it is high time uh, we play this politics uh, you know, with high level of uh, cleverness. I'm a, I'm uh, because, yeah. uh, because we must align properly. We need, we need to go now. Yes. We're totally out of time. We must, we must align yeah. properly you know, with the government at the center. Because I must tell you, uh, in our last election, uh, I cannot beat my chest and say uh, Southeast right. did well for APC. Senator, so, thank but you I so believe much. that uh, yeah. more opportunity will come. For us to so that normally. However, we're expecting, we are totally out of time. Yeah, we're, we're, we're <laughs> expecting the additional one and the, additional nominees. The, the, don't uh, let me rule you out of order. Thank, thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate it. Prof, thank you so much indeed. <laughs>